OK, we are going to solve logarithmic equations and there are two major methods that are used with these. You don't really have much of a choice, if any. It all depends on the setup of the logarithmic equation. So we're going to start off using what's called the definition of a logarithmic function, namely and we've already been over this, so let's talk about it again. An exponential function looks like this. Y equals E, I was going to say E, but A to the X, where A is just a number. And then since logarithmic functions are the inverses of these, we first switch the X and the Y. And then we solve for Y and this is what you have log base A of X equals Y. OK, so if we put this in the form of words, you've got log base argument equals exponent. So when you use the definition of a logarithm, what you're really doing is you're saying the argument equals the base raised to the exponent. And these two equations are exactly equivalent. They're just finding different things. They're like two different formulas for the same basic topic. All right, so for instance, let's use this right here. We have, let me make this bigger. And these are the, uh, the questions in your homework. We have log base six of X equals two. Using the definition of a logarithm, that means the argument X equals the base six raised to the um, um, exponent 2. 6 squared is 36. So your answer is 36, and that's all there is to it. You take this number down here, raise it to the power of that number right there, and that's what the argument equals. Now, there are some fine points we have to address about, well, what is the domain going to be? Because that tells us if an answer is allowed to be an answer, if a solution is allowed to be a solution. So, we have log, we have base. We have argument. And we have equals exponent. The argument of the logarithmic function, arg, has to be strictly greater than zero. That's it. Has to be positive. The argument has to be positive. When the argument is nothing but X, it's pretty easy to figure out. OK, here's log X equals negative six. We know that the base is 10 when there is no base written. 
It's just understood to be a 10. So if log base 10 of X equals negative six, then what X equals is 10 to the negative six power. Now that negative up there does not mean that uh, the answer is negative, uh, that X is negative. What it means is you've got 10, you've got one times 10 to the negative six. Scientific notation, and we were talking about this the other day, this is going to be, this is code for here you've got 1.0, but you move the decimal point one, two, three, four, five, six places to the left. So what, what 10 to the negative six equals is a, a pain to write down. A very, very small number, but not negative. A negative sign on an exponent has nothing to do with the negativity of the base raised to that power. Okay, so just remember that. Here we have the ln of x the natural log of X equals seven. To get the answer right, first you've got to translate this into what it really is. LN is log base E. So this is log base E of X equals seven. So now we can do the problem X equals the number E raised to the seventh power. And that's your answer, E to the seventh. Okay, so we're starting off with some very basic problems here. But now they're getting a tad more difficult. Here we have log base three of an argument that is two X minus three, and that equals three. So first let's take this apart. Ah! So I'm going to write it larger. Log base three of the argument to X minus three equals three. Now here, this isn't just X, this is two X minus three. So we have to be very careful here. We have to find the domain before we do anything else. Two X minus three is strictly greater than zero. Add three to both sides. Negative three plus three is zero. So you're left with two X is strictly greater than three, which means X is going to be strictly greater than three over two, and three over two is one and a half. All right, so X doesn't, in order four, here, it's better to say it this way, in order four, let me see how much room I have to write this. What this means, okay, um, yeah. If X, if two, X minus three is going to be, let's just put it in English, 
is going to be strictly greater than zero. That is absolutely positive. Not equal zero, but strictly greater than zero. Strictly greater than zero. Then X must be strictly greater than three over two. And FYI, 3 over 2 is 1.5. 1 1.5. 1 so that's what this means. We have to decide, given that this 2x minus 3 has to be strictly positive, then x is going to have to be what? Well, greater than 1 and a half. Not equaling 1 and a half, but actually greater than one and a half. So those will be the only answers we can accept. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna solve this. Now I know what answers I cannot have. So if log base three of two x minus three equals three then the argument 2x minus 3 will, excuse me, will equal this 3 raised to that 3 power. Okay, so 2x minus 3 will equal 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then I will add 3 to both sides, plus 3. Well, that's all right. Plus 3, I guess I didn't change colors. So 2x equals 30. Divide by 2 and divide by 2. You have x equals 15. Now, before I can say 15 is definitely the answer, I'd better check, is it greater than 1.5? Well, yes. Cool. So my answer can be 15. That's the way this works. So there are really two steps involved. You solve the problem, yes, by using the definition of a logarithm, that is base raised to power equals argument. But you also have to find out what, what X is allowed to equal. Or that old, my math lab, that'll get you. Now we're getting harder. Look at that plus sign. That means we're, we've got to use the product rule. But first, we've got to have, we've got to check each of these arguments. We have two arguments here. We have an X and we have an X plus nine. Both of these are going to have to be greater than zero. X is greater than zero. X plus nine is greater than zero. So solve this for X minus nine minus nine. X is greater than negative nine. 
Now, now just draw a quick number line here. Here's positive infinity, that is the x-axis. Negative infinity, here's zero, but negative nine is down here. Now, if, what if my answer was like negative seven? That would make this ant this limit very, very happy, but it would make x equals zero very unhappy. Can't have that. Whatever our answer is, has to be both greater than zero and greater than negative nine. So I have to kind of reason this out. Oh, negative seven is greater than negative nine. Okay, well, Yeah, that won't work for zero. What we have to do is look at the most limiting number, the most limiting interval. I'm gonna draw them with different colors. Okay, this is this. And this, is this. My domain has to be where the lines overlap, where both colors are or both lines are at the same time. Because any answer in here is going to keep both x greater than zero and x greater than negative nine, happy. It's gonna meet both of those rules at the same time. So I have to here, because of this, I can only al allow answers that are greater than zero. And that's just the way it is. So I have to keep this in mind. Maybe even draw some arrows. I have to be aware of that limiting factor. I can't just take any old answer. Now let's do the problem. All right, log X. That's log base 10, by the way. Log x, and I'm going to write it that way, log base 10 of x plus log base 10 of x plus 9 equals 1. I have to combine these into one logarithm before I can use the definition of a logarithm. How am I gonna combine them? With the product rule. So let me make a note about that. I have to use the product rule. Cool. So this is going to give me log base 10 of x times x plus 9 equals 1. And we can even go ahead and multiply in there if you want. Log base 10 of x squared plus 9x equals 1. Okay, so I use the product rule. 
And then I just went, <coughs> went ahead and multiplied before I did anything else. Now I'm going to use the definition of a logarithm. Base raised to the exponent equals the argument. And I know that 10 to the 1 is 10, right? But I want to show my steps. So that'll be x squared plus 9x equals 10. Now I've got a quadratic equation. Woohoo! I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides of the equation. x squared plus 9x minus 10 equals zero. And negative 10 is going to equal 10 times negative 1, and 10 plus negative 1 is positive 9, right there. So that's how I'm going to factor this. plus 10, minus 1. Alright, now we're just going to do the usual thing. Set each factor equal to 0. Subtract 10 from both sides. So x equals negative 10. Add 1 to both sides. So x equals 1. And now woohoo, I have two answers, right? Negative 10 and positive 1. Wrong. Because we can only accept answers that are greater than zero. Otherwise, look there. You'll have a negative 10 stuck there. And in fact, a negative 10 plus 9 would be negative 1. You would have two negative arguments, but it doesn't matter if you even had just one negative argument the logarithm function would be undefined. In fact, if you had zero in either one of these, the logarithm function would be undefined. So, we're going to have to throw out negative 10. And I hate throwing anything out till it's moldy. So one is our answer. That goes in the answer box. And that's how you do these. You know my math lab. If you put in both answers, it doesn't give you half credit, it gives you zero credit. So let's do another. But we're going to use the product rule again. 
All right, but let's check these arguments first. X plus two has to be strictly greater than zero. Subtract two from both sides, minus two, minus two. They'll have to have X being greater than negative two. And then X minus two has to be strictly greater than zero. Add two to both sides. X is strictly greater than two. And then just so you can see them, I mean, it's not gonna hurt, do it with pencil. You're gonna have um, positive two, and negative two, and x has got to be greater than two, and x has got to be greater than negative two, So if you're very visual, your answer can only be where the two lines are. But if you like to reason things out, you've got to figure that any number greater than two is automatically going to be greater than negative two. So we'll just make sure that all of our answers are greater than two. So I'm going to circle this and maybe even, you know, to catch my attention. And now I'm going to concentrate on solving the problem. So here we go. Log base two of X plus two plus log base two of x minus two equals five. So that plus means I'm going to use the product rule. So I'll have log base two of X plus two times X minus two equals five. So let's go ahead and log base two why not go ahead and multiply them? You're going to have x squared minus 4 equals 5. You're going to have x squared minus 2x plus 2x. They zero each other out, the middle terms. And then 2 times negative 2 is minus 4, negative 4. Okay, now, now we use the definition of a of blah of a logarithm. Okay, actually, I should have put put that one lower. All right, x squared minus four. I'll put it up here. It's like interior decorating. No, I want to move the chair over there. Two raised to the fifth power. So you put that in your calculator. Or if you've been doing math for a long time, there's no way to not memorize it. 
32. Then I'll solve for x squared by adding 4 to both sides, plus 4, plus 4. Look how nice whoever wrote this problem is. We're going to have a perfect square. So I take the square root of x squared and plus or minus the square root of 36. So x equals plus or minus 6, which is uh, negative 6. Should have put an equals there instead. And positive 6. But don't put them in the answer box yet because we have to check on this. Remember our answer has to be greater than positive 2. So that leaves out negative six. Bye bye, negative six. So positive six is the only answer. So let's go over this. I have the same base. I have the log of an argument plus the log of an argument. That automatically means I'm going to use the product rule. Because I can't use the definition of a logarithm. <coughs> it's an allergy day. The inside of my nose is itching. Ah. Uh. <sighs> Excuse me. Okay. <coughs> I cannot use the definition of a logarithm until I have one log expression. That means a log, a base, and an argument equals a number. Period. Okay, then <coughs> I, I say two raised to the fifth power equals the argument x squared minus four. And from there, we're, we just solve a quadratic equation, which you've been doing almost all semester. The only stipulation is before you say something is definitely your answer, you have to check your domain and make sure that your answers are allowed, both of your answers, when you have to. But when you have one answer, make sure it's allowed. Okay. Look at this. We have the log base 10 of an argument minus log base 10 of an argument. That means we're going to use the quotient rule. But before we use any rule, we check our domains. So 7x plus 5 has to be strictly greater than zero. And X minus three has to be strictly greater than zero. Now I just solve each of these um, inequalities for X. Subtract five, subtract five. Five minus five is zero. So we'll have seven X is greater than negative five. Divide by 7, 
divide by seven. X is greater than negative five sevenths. Over here, add three to both sides. X is greater than three. And then, is that my pencil? No, it's not. <laughs> So much for experimenting. OK. Um, um, all right, Dr just draw these out. You know, make yourself a little X axis. Now here's three. And here's negative five sevenths. Do I know that's where negative five sevenths is? Well, it's a negative number. It's going to be to the left of three. So there's that, and there's that. Bring it down a little bit there. All right, so here's the graph of that. Here's the graph of that, and my answer is, I mean, my, my domain is going to be only where the two lines overlap. Or again, there's the common sense approach. If a number is greater than three, it's certainly going to be greater than a negative number. So this is, this is what we go for. So now here, so I make a bunch of arrows helps me remember to go back and look at it. And now I, I concentrate on solving the problem, which is log 7x plus 5 minus log x minus 3 equals 1. Okay, gonna use, well, here's 10, and here's 10. So we're gonna use the quotient rule. To make this into one log, okay? So we'll have log base 10 of, that minus sign means we're going to have a fraction. 7x plus 5 over x minus 3 equals 1. Okay, now if I thought I could factor that and cancel out that, I would but I can't. So um, we're gonna be left with a fraction here. When we use the uh, quotient rule, uh, the quotient rule, no, 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 the definition of a logarithm, we already used the quotient rule here. Okay, so now, definition of a logarithm. Ten to the one power equals the argument. So seven X plus five over X minus three equals 10 raised to the one power. So seven X plus five over x minus 3 equals 10. Well, all right, what are we going to do now? I am going to 
multiply both sides by X minus three. Why? So I can cancel that out. At which point I put parentheses around everything. OK, the X minus threes cancel out and I am left with seven X plus five equals 10, 10 times X minus three. So I distribute here. 10 X minus 30. All right. Hmm. Wow, this is linear. It's not even quadratic, is it? I love it. Minus 7x minus 7x. That zeroes out, leaving me with 5 equals 3x minus 30. And then add 30. Add 30. 35 equals that. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. OK. 3x plus 0 because these are 0. So 3x divide by 3, divide by 3. And so x equals this which though it says 35 over three, you can kind of do this in your head and say, well, I know three would go into 33, and then there are two thirds left over. So thinking, 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 I mean, this is the answer, but we have to think in terms of that. And we wanna know is 35 over three greater than three, and the answer is heck yes. I mean, what if that was 30? That would be 10. So 3 into 35 is going to be 11 and 2 thirds, actually. So yes, 35 over 3 is greater than 3. So we can go with this answer. 35 over 3. Or if you put it in your calculator, you'd get 11.67, something like that. And you would know immediately, well, that is greater than three. Yes, it is. So that's all we care about. Is this answer greater than three? Heck yes. So we can accept it. Okay, so that was the quotient rule. Oh my goodness, what do we do now? Well, when we get through checking out the domain, which will get faster and faster, um, all we're gonna do is add log base four of X plus three over to the other side then it'll be a plus, so we'll use the product rule. But first, the most important part, X has to be greater than zero, and X plus three has to be greater than zero. Subtract three, subtract three. X has to be greater than negative three. Make a little X axis. Um, here's zero, here's negative three. X has to be greater than zero. X has to be greater than negative three. And it's only where the two arrows overlap that I can find my answers. 
or answer. So, x is greater than zero. I mean, sometimes it doesn't take a lot of thinking, but sometimes it does. All right, now. Log base four of x equals one minus log base four of x plus three. So I'm going to add this guy over to the other side. Um, okay, okay. Plus log base four of x plus three. Plus log base four of x plus three. Boom. Boom. These guys zero out over here, leaving me with a one. Over here, we're going to have log base four. Scroll up. Log base four of x plus three. Plus log base four of x. Yeah. Log base four. of x then don't say 4 to the 1 yet we have to use the product rule to make one log statement so that we have log base 4 of x times x plus 3 equals 1. And so log base 4 of x squared plus 3x. So far, this is just like, well, not just like, but pretty much like the other problem we did. And then 4 raised to the 1 power equals x squared plus 3x. which is four. So we'll subtract four from both sides. And what that will get us is x squared plus three x minus four equals, what am I doing? Oh yeah, that's what I'm doing. I've got a quadratic equation. There's no choice here. Now negative four is going to equal four times negative one and four plus negative one equals positive three, ba bum, boom, 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 equals zero. X, X plus four minus one. And then we do the thing that we do x plus four equals zero and x minus one equals zero. Oh my goodness. Oh no, okay, x greater than zero. It is possible, you know, to have both answers thrown out. I hate it when that happens, just because I feel like I've wasted time on literally nothing. which is kind of a stupid way to feel. Considering I would have gotten the right answer, but still. Okay, now, you know that both of these answers are not gonna be our answer because our domain tells us that our, our answers, our answers, our solutions to this equation have to be greater than zero. Negative four is not greater than zero. Not the last time I looked. So one 
is going to be our only answer. Okay, so these are all the problems that are solved by using the definition of a logarithm which is what this process is called, where you take the base and you raise it to that power. So you take that, that becomes the exponent, and then this becomes what you put on the left side, or the, what I put on the left side. It doesn't matter which side you put it on. That's just always the way I saw it in my head. Questions about these? Now that I've done 5 million of them, or it feels like 5 million of them, any comments? Okay then. We're going to use a different method now. And how do you know when to use which method? Easy. When you've got logs or LNs, they're logs. Logs on the left, uh, on one side of the equal sign and a number on the other, you use this definition of what a logarithm is. The base raised to the number on the other side of the equal sign equals the argument of the logarithm function. So you have two raised to the fifth equals x squared minus four. And the word log just goes away because we've used the definition of what a log is. Now we're going to do something that's actually easier. I mean, I always thought it was. That's just me. I still have to check out. Oh my goodness. I still have to check out my domain. So let's do that first. Now we have three domains because look at this. We have logs on the left and logs on the right. We have logs everywhere. You can't use the definition of a logarithm. Instead, we're going to use what's called the properties of a one-to-one -one function. Yep, that's what it's called, and I'll show it to you in a minute, but let's check out our um, domains. Or actually our domain, but. C plus 45. Is greater than zero. C plus 5. Is greater than zero. And there's C. C is greater than zero. So we're going to do three checks. I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides, so I'll have C is greater than negative 45. I subtract 5 from both sides, so I have C is greater than negative 5. And this is just C is greater than zero. I mean, it's already solved. Now, probably by now, some of you are going to be able to do this in your head. But 
I still recommend plotting zero, plotting negative five, and then way the heck down is negative 45. And now let's see, we could make that green just because it's fun. And this red, and this blue. Okay, uh, C is greater than negative 45. Guess that would make this the C axis. C is greater than negative 5. And C is greater than 0. The answer, the solution we get, or the solutions we get, have to satisfy all of these. So this is the only place the only interval that will be able to satisfy all of these answers at this I mean all of these stipulations it's really what the uh, domain is all of these stipulations at the same time one number keeps everybody happy. Who knows, maybe two numbers do. All right, now let us go on. Log. Base three of C plus 45 minus log base 3 of C plus 5 equals log base 3 of C. Okay, caveat. Okay, I, in order to be able to use <clears throat> the method called the properties of a, uh, the property of a one to one function, you have to have log of argument equals log of argument. One log equals one log. So I'm going to use the quotient rule over here to put these together. log base 3 of C plus 45 over C plus 5 equals log base 3 of C. Now here's the property of a one-to-one -one function. First, let me say that I use the quotient rule. That's ugly. Really, really ugly. Let's capitalize it. Be nice. Okay the quotient rule. Now, I, I, I mean, it's common sense. You can think of it as being common sense. If log base three of something equals log base three of something, the fact is that those somethings are gonna equal each other. So C plus 45, over C plus five equals C. 
Doesn't that make sense? It almost doesn't even need a name. But it is a property of a one to one function. So prop. One to one. Sounds like a, a something on the ballot out in California. Prop this and prop that. Prop one to one funk. How about that? That's fun. Funk. You have to be very careful how you say it, though. Hope you're laughing. OK, now uh, this is the denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by the denominator. C plus five. Because over here, if you imagine that being C plus five over one, a C plus five up there can cancel out a C plus five down there, leaving me with C plus 45. Over here, we're going to have C squared plus five C. We could call that distribution. Okay. Well, I've got a quadratic equation. Dog on it. That's pretty good. Um, so let's just, I like to go where the, the quadratic term is positive, just makes it a little bit easier, or a whole lot easier, actually. So let's subtract C from both sides, and let's subtract 45. From both sides of the equation. So we're going to get 0 plus 0 over here, which is 0. And over here we'll have c squared plus 4c minus 45. Now, let's factor minus negative 45 and see if we can find a pair of factors that add up to positive 4. And if you know that 45 equals 9 times 5, then negative 45 is going to equal 9 times negative 5, or negative 9 times positive 5. But positive 9 plus negative 5 equals positive 4, and so that is going to be our, our factorization. C, C plus nine minus five. And then we go through the whole thing, setting each of these linear factors equal to zero and solving for C. C plus nine equals zero c minus 5 equals 0, subtract 9, uh, subtract 9, c equals negative 9, and plus 5, plus 5, c equals 5. And then we check our domain and we see, aha, aha. Our number has to be greater than zero, so negative nine is gonna have to go bye-bye. And we'll have, we'll go with C equals five. So the only difference 
is that you get the log of an argument equals the log of an argument and you set the arguments equal and then you start doing whatever you have to do to solve for the variable. Let's do one more. We've got time. Well, poop. I thought there were only two left. Here we have log and log equals log. So we know we're going to be using the one to one principle. OK, so we have log of X plus log of X minus two equals log of three. OK, so I'll have X greater than zero. And X minus two greater than zero. Whoop. OK. So, x will have to be greater than 0, and x will have to be greater than 2. What about 3? There's no way we can make 3 into a 0. There's no variable there. 3 is just 3. So, we don't have to worry about it. So, x is greater than 0, and x is greater than 2. Here's zero, here's two. Aha, this is different. Okay, so X is zero, X is two, positive two. So here and here, Where the two arrows overlap is over here to the right of two. So our answer is going to have to be greater than two. All right, so we have log, log. We have log X plus log X minus two. Equals log three. So we put these two together with the product rule. Log of X times X minus two equals log three. So this is going to be log x squared minus 2x equals log 3. So x squared minus 2x equals 3. Now I subtract 3 from both sides. So I'll get a zero over there. X squared minus two X minus three. Boom, 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 boom. I'm, I'm just checking this out. Negative three, yeah, factors into one times negative three or negative one times positive three but one plus negative three equals negative two, which is right there. So that, this is the combination we're looking for. So X, X plus one minus three, 
x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. Um, subtract 1, subtract 1. So x equals negative 1 ah, plus 3 plus 3 x equals positive 3. Now we come back up here and see that our answer has to be greater than positive 2. 3 is definitely greater than positive 2. Negative 1 is definitely smaller. So we X that out and we go with 3. So there's that. Now, let's see, how many more do we have? We have LNs. We have logs. We have a lot. Who on earth would give you this many problems? It's outrageous. You should complain. No, no, you shouldn't. So I think we have done enough. Uh, technically, I think we have five minutes. So are there any questions? I'm sure there are. How could there not be? But if there aren't, then I will see you tomorrow. And we're going to begin going over exponential growth and decay. I doubt that we could get through it all because I'm going to go really slowly through it. Um, we're probably still going to be working on it on Monday, but after that, from Tuesday on, going to be answering your questions about the practice exam, the practice final exam. So next Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Practice final exam. Bring questions, look at it over the weekend, but I'm not saying goodbye. I will see you tomorrow for exponential growth and decay. I'm going to stop recording, save the document. If you want to ask some questions about this, feel free. <laughs>